Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we are taking a look and installing a draw tight class 3 hitch on a 2021 Volvo XC40. The addition of a trailer hitch on your vehicle is always a good option to open up what you can actually do with your vehicle, whether it be add some real estate with a cargo carrier, put a bike rack on here to tote your bikes around, or even tow a small little trailer. So this addition is very nice on the Volvo. Now this does have a two by two standard receiver tube opening. Now that's gonna make it nice for a lot of your accessories as a lot of them do come in that two inch configuration. One of the things that you'll see first glance on this trailer hitch is the fact that the only thing visible is gonna be the receiver tube opening as well as the safety chain loop. So having that hidden crossbar, it gives it that nice OEM look and you still get the functionality. This is steel construction, so it's gonna be very robust it also has a nice black powder coat finish on it, and that's gonna help prevent any corrosion or rust and also look good in the process. You also have a rolled steel safety chain loop here, which is gonna be a large opening, and that's gonna help you put larger style clevis or even your standard size hook when towing a trailer. I do recommend if you are planning on pulling any trailers to get a trailer wiring harness kit and that's going to send the signal to your trailer while pulling keeping you safe and legal we do have those here at e-trailer just put your vehicle in the fit guide and make sure you have the correct one you're also going to see a standard 5 8 hitch pin hole and that's going to allow you to put your hitch pin and clip in and that's going to keep your accessories loaded in place and secure now that is going to be a requirement for any accessories that you put into your receiver tube opening and a lot of your accessories will come with a clip the hitch itself does not so if you do need one we have those here at e-trailer we also have locking ones available too keeping your accessories nice and secure so what all can you do with this now that's going to be determined based off the weight of what the hitch can handle and this one can hold up to 4,000 pounds for a gross trailer weight it's going to be the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded up that's a decent amount for a vehicle like this you also have a tongue weight rating of 600 pounds, and that's gonna be the downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So that's important to note for when you're loading a bike rack or cargo carrier and how much weight you can actually load onto it. So just to be safe, you wanna make sure to check your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the vehicle is actually capable of towing and compare that with the weight ratings on the hitch. And between those two numbers, you're gonna to wanna to take the lower one just to stay safe. Let's get some important measurements. So from the center of the hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia, you're looking about three and a half inches. And that's gonna be important for when you're planning to put your accessories on here to know where they fit and how close to your rear fascia, keeping it from getting scratched. Some of your accessories may also be folding, so you can measure those to make sure that you're also clear. One more thing that we'll check is gonna be from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground, which is 15 inches. And that's a good amount of ground clearance for a vehicle like this. That's important to keep in mind though when putting your accessories on as they may hang out and as you go over bumps or inclines that will tip down and can get close to the ground. So keep that in mind when going in situations like that. So many customers ask if you lose the ability to use your kick lift gate assist when you have a trailer hitch installed on your XC40. I'm here to tell you you're in luck, as it still works. When looking at the hitch before doing the install, it said that it was a 10 out of 10 with difficulty. I was a little skeptical and wondered how bad it could be. After doing the installation, I'm here to tell you it is not that difficult. There's a little bit of trimming required and you'll have to remove the rear fascia, but this is a relatively easy rear fascia to remove. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step so that way we can get our hitch installed. We're going to begin the installation by removing the rear fascia. In order to get this off to install our hitch, we need to pop this off. And to begin that, we're going to go on our wheel wells and there's going to be some T25 screws that we're going to remove. There should be five on each. Now, I highly recommend keeping these in a safe spot. And that way, when you're done with installation, you'll have them ready to go. You can go ahead and remove these T25s. Now, they can be kind of tricky. So if you have it a long extension, maybe with a swivel end on your bit, you could probably get to those. Uh, if that's a little tricky as well, you can actually put a jack onto your pinch weld on the frame and raise this up. And that'll give you a little bit of clearance between the tire and these. 
or having a nice little mini ratchet like this really helps for jobs like these. So go ahead and you're gonna remove five on the driver's side and then we're gonna go on the passenger side and repeat that same process. So now you're gonna go to the middle part of your fascia and you're gonna see the Torx bits and there's gonna be two on each side. So go ahead and remove those. We're now gonna be removing the rear fascia. So I highly suggest grabbing an extra set of hands as the bumper can kind of flop around and you don't want it to scratch. Now there is going to be some clips attached to it. So take your time with this. Uh, the plastic clips can kind of give you some trouble at times, but the best method is working your way from the outside of the vehicle towards the middle. And take your time, just, it should pry. And if you do have plastic trim removal tools, you can use those as well. But again, you want to make sure that you're not making contact paint on paint so it's not scratching your car. So with that pup, just work your way down one at a time. So as I pry back, I'm going to start to see some of these cables attached here. So that's where we really want to be careful. We don't want to damage those. So as we pull this center off here, we don't want to pull it too far. Now, what you're going to see is this middle one is going to bind up a little bit here, and that's going to keep that fascia attached. So you can simply unclip this here. It's just a plastic clip like that with a little metal. So if you pry underneath it, even just with my fingers, I was able to separate that. You're also going to see there's going to be your parking sensors here, and you're going to have these plugged in to these little dots here. So this has a little clip. You're going to simply press on that tab button right there, those two little prongs there in the U shape, and that should pop out. Keep working your way down. You also have the lights here in on the bumper and now there's two options here. You can simply twist these and pop these out or you can pull the tab, either one. And then you do have another parking sensor here. Now some of the clips have a little zip tie plug here. So you should be able to get that out with your fingers, but if not, a plastic trim panel or interior panel removal tool will work really well. And if you don't have those, you can also use a flathead screwdriver. So wedge that under there and then just kind of give it a twist and it should pop out. It may take a little bit, but... Just like that. Now before you put the bumper away, you're going to see it does continue on here. So just like the other clip that we had, you can go ahead and pop these off. You can just kind of tilt it back a little bit and you're going to see that you can work your way down the fascia. Once we get these popped off, you're going to have one more of these plastic ones. Using a flathead really can help pry these off. Just take your time. You don't want to break these um, because they won't, you know, might cause it to not actually get the wire nice and tight back on the fascia. And if you do happen to break one, luckily there are plenty of them, so it's not the end of the world, but take your time. Once you have all your clips removed here, you can actually remove this center plug in here. And that's going to allow this rear fascia to finally be free. So set this in a good spot. Whether you have some cardboard to lay it on, we have this flat table. Uh, just set it aside so it doesn't fall over and get scratched. So now we have our rear fascia off. We're going to be removing the three 15 millimeter bolts on the actual bumper here. Now on the impact bar, you're gonna have three on each side. You can see the top two pretty easily. And then in this cutout, you'll see the bottom one there. So go ahead and loosen those up. Now we will be using the hardware over, so definitely make sure you hold on to these in a safe place. Now we have all six nuts removed. We can actually take our impact bar off. Now set this aside because we will be reinstalling it here shortly. Now before we put the hitch in place, you will see there is this factory. Uh, they have this caulk here that they use for the seams. We're gonna have to scrape some of that off so it sits flush. So just to give you an idea, I'm gonna mount this up. 
and it's pretty close, but this is going to be sandwiched between our impact bar. So we're going to want to take off just these little edges here, anything that's making contact with where the hitch is. So with my scraper, I'm just going to make a nice little line on each side, and that way I know how far I need to scrape off. So if you have a putty knife or even like a utility knife, that should take it off pretty easily. Just make a little cut and then just scrape away at it. And once that's flush or bare metal, we should be good. Now before we put our hitch in place, we're actually going to go on the back side of the hitch. And since this is gonna be sandwiched in between metal, we don't want any water getting in there and causing rust prematurely. So what we're going to do is take a silicone sealer, an RTV of sorts will work just fine. And what we're gonna do is put a line around this base plate here. And that's gonna create a nice little watertight seal. We do sell silicone sealant here. So if you don't have any, feel free to pick some up here and that way you'll have it ready for your install. Now go ahead and do that on the other side as well. So now I can raise the hitch in place and put those on the studs. Now with that in place, we're going to grab our impact bar and place that over that. Now have your hardware handy that we removed previous because we'll be reusing that. So when you have both there, you can simply just hand thread these on just to hold it in place for now. Now before we tighten down all our hardware, this is a good chance to make sure that your receiver tube opening is aligned dead center. You do have a little bit of play, so get that set where you want it. And then once that's in place, you can go ahead and tighten these down. And then we're gonna follow it up with a torque wrench to get the proper settings. So you don't need to go crazy tight on these because the torque wrench will make sure that it's properly tightened up. So now the, we're gonna take our torque wrench and torque it to the specifications in the instructions. Now it is important to make sure that you do this step because that's gonna make sure it's not putting too much stress on those studs. It's also gonna keep your hitch in place and tight for years to come. So refer to your instruction manual. And if you don't have a torque wrench, we sell those here at eTrailer. And we also, you can also rent those at auto parts stores generally, but make sure you do this step. Now we're gonna need to trim to make room for our hitch receiver. Now I recommend marking this out and that way you have a clear line and I'm just using the suggestions in the instructions as far as my dimensions go. Now I also recommend doing this on the inside rather than on the bottom side because you wanna make sure not to contact this as this is our lift gate assist there. So you can use a few different tools, whether it be a hacksaw, um, I'm gonna use a rotary tool here and that's gonna make it nice and easy to kinda zip through here. So make sure you wear your safety glasses and get to cutting. Now this little extra lip here, make sure you trim that as well. And this piece should come out pretty easy. Now that that's cut, we're gonna take a file and get these burrs off, making it nice and clean before installing. So now we're ready to put our rear fascia on, but as we had to take those clips off, we're gonna have to repeat that process in reverse to get this back on. So you're gonna to want to start here with the assist for lifting your lift gate here. And then just set the clips back in, in the same position that you took them off. Now make sure you do have all your clips in place and that's gonna be not only your lift assist, but also your sensors and the lights. You're gonna to wanna to make sure they're all set up before you put your bumper on so you don't have to pop them back off later. So now that we are all hooked up, I can simply put this back just like we took it off. Now, instead of working from the outside 
in, we're gonna start obviously with the inside and work our way out. Now that we have all our clips in place, our rear fascia is back on and we put our fender lining screws in, we're ready to hook up to our hitch and take it on whatever adventure you'd like. And that was a look and installation of the Drawtite Class 3 trailer hitch on a 2021 Volvo XC40. Thanks for watching.